I'm Amy Cherry. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow ya. A powerful warning for parents to monitor their child's internet activity. Karen Johnson reports. A two-month investigation by the Flagler County Sheriff's Office, Cyber Crimes, and Major Case Units, in conjunction with Volusia County Sheriff's Office and the North Florida Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, resulted in an arrest of the worst kind, according to Sheriff Rick Staley. Our detectives arrested a 16-year-old for multiple counts of child pornography. Staley says during the execution of the search warrant, multiple electronic devices were seized and forensically analyzed. The search of those devices led to the recovery of multiple images of child pornography and concluded with the arrest of 16-year-old Bradley Humphrey. To parents of teenagers, this is the second arrest we have made of teenagers obtaining, selling, producing child pornography. Monitor what your kids are doing on the Internet. We do not want to arrest them, but if they are behaving this way, they need some significant assistance immediately. Sheriff Staley adds investigations like this are increasingly more important, with so many of our kids now learning online. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. I was actually one of the fortunate individuals who got to spend 12 days in our local hospital. Jesse Thorpe, general manager and chief operating officer at Hammock Dunes, was diagnosed with COVID-19 back in mid-April. He recounts the ordeal for WNZF, including the moment where he knew something was dramatically wrong. All of a sudden, uh, it felt like somebody was, I don't know how to describe it, I had this horrendous pain in the right side of my chest. And I, I couldn't completely stand up straight. It was very uncomfortable. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't take a breath. So I go to the hospital and... and and it turns out I had a pleural effusion, so they, they ended up doing a synthesis. They took, I think, somewhere between seven and 800 milliliters of, or roughly a quart of fluid out of my right lung. They diagnosed him with pneumonia. He was given steroids and sent home. A week later, Thorpe was right back in the hospital. I am coughing my head off and I'm feeling horrible. And so I showed up at the emergency room door. I had 103.7 fever. I spent seven days in basically an isolated room looking at nurses' eyes. That was the only part of their body you could see. And it was more than moderately awful. I'm fortunate in that I never got put on a ventilator, but I was on oxygen. I was on a lot of other things. And it was probably the most miserable I've ever felt in my life. He's also what's becoming known as one of the COVID long haulers, those who feel the lingering effects of the disease far after their infection. I still can't take a full deep breath without my right lung aching. I've had a couple of incidences since then where suddenly for one day I'll pop a low-grade fever for literally a day. I go home, I go to sleep, I wake up, I'm fine the next day. And, you know, sometimes I just get tired for weird reasons. It's gotten a lot better the further I've gotten away from it. You know, it took me about three weeks after being released from the hospital to lose the cough. You know, my body's just not up to what it was before. He calls his tale a cautionary one and his message for Flagler County residents. People should just wear the darn mask and you just got to do what you can do and be as reasonable as you can. With the weather expected to go below 40 degrees tonight, the sheltering tree will open its doors. So if you or somebody you know needs a warm place to go as it gets colder, you can go to the sheltering tree and even get a ride to it. The sheltering tree, Sue Bicking, says there is now bus service through the county. We have Flagler County Transport with four buses picking up people around the county. She said that it's new and it will get people to the Church on the Rock if they need cold weather shelter. We want people to come in for a 6 o'clock dinner. We want them to be in out of the cold. We want them to have coffee and a a good meal and then be able to relax in a safe and warm location. She said the bus service will help with that. To listen to the full interview with Sue Bickings and other voices you know from the radio, download the Flagler Radio app and then go to the Free For All Friday podcast. Tomorrow, COVID protocols at the sheltering tree with a special approval. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. Flagler County hosted the state's largest chili cook-off over the weekend. John Arking has the details. The International Chili Society held its fourth annual chili cook-off at the European Village in Palm Coast Friday and Saturday. Vicki Marnick is the manager of the International Chili Society and says they had nearly two dozen chefs competing in various categories. On Saturday, the winner of the veggie was Mike Powers, 
He also won the Verde, and he won the home style. He took three of those five categories. Darren Jester won the traditional red on Saturday, and Venny Miller won the salsa on Saturday. On Sundays, Mike Powers again won the Verde. Tanya Jester won the red. Mike Powers won the home style. And John Blackwell won the salsa. All were vying for the top prize and a chance to qualify for the world finals in Myrtle Beach in April. You'll find details online at chilicookoff.com. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm John Arking. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Amy Cherry.